Joe? <clears throat> All right. We did the gate of uh, 15,081 people, 3.895 million. Um, I'll give you the this, uh, submission of the night was Ryan Jensen. No secret who the knockout of the night was, Mike Russo. And uh, fight of the night was Brills versus Noguera. All those guys win $65,000 each. So congratulations. Um, Rashad will be here in a minute. He's finishing up his uh, last minute stuff. Who's first? I'm a, I'm, my first question is for Rampage. Anyway, um, going into this fight, there was a lot of uh, back and forth, uh, a lot of harsh words. <laughs> Do you think the, uh, the emotions involved may have uh, impacted how you approached the fight? And would you do it differently if there's a rematch? Um, you know, emotions didn't bother me one bit. You know, it was a fight, and uh, uh, Rashad had an uh, excellent game plan, and it looks like he stuck to it. And um, in, in the rematch, I, I just try to be more aggressive. I kept um, trying to mentally block out all the people talk about ring rust because, you know, I knew it was going to be a factor, but I just – was trying to block it out, and, and people kept asking me about it, kept asking me about it, and it was really pissing me off in interviews, and I kind of stopped people from asking about it. But out there tonight, I I felt it, you know what I'm saying? I felt it bad, and, you know what I'm saying, I'm really ashamed of myself that, that you know what I'm saying, I, I, I fell victim to a ring rust. So, you know, uh, emotions had nothing to do with it. I can, I can, I can fight piss off of people. It was no big deal. As far as uh, the loss, obviously it, this fight did mean something to you. Uh, how painful is it? Is this? Would you say this is the most difficult loss of your career? Well, no. When I got knocked the hell out, was my most difficult <laughs> loss. This wasn't that bad. I didn't get knocked out. Okay. A uh, pergunta para o Rogério Minotoro, aqui é Eduardo do UFC Sem Limites, São Paulo, Brasil. Você sabe que você tem uma legião de fãs lá no Brasil. Queria que você deixasse um recado para o nosso pessoal lá e falar um pouco da tua luta. Você esperava que fosse uma luta tão difícil, que foi decisão dividida e uma trocação frenética por parte do seu oponente? É, realmente, eu, eu não estava não esperando tanto assim, mas eu sabia que era um lutador duro, realmente surpreendeu. Não tive tempo de treinar tanto essa parte de, 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 de quedas, porque eu estava esperando outro adversário. Mas, realmente, foi uma grande surpresa. Valorizou bastante, mas, para mim, foi bom que a gente conseguiu fazer a melhor luta na noite. Então, parabéns, antes de mais nada, pela luta da noite. Se eu puder deixar um recado, pessoal, lá na Rede TV no Brasil, UFC Sem Limites, dá um alô nos teus fãs. Isso aí, galera. Eu acho que, é, com certeza, foi uma grande luta, mas eu espero, da próxima vez, fazer melhor, cada vez melhor para vocês. Eu luto por vocês, meus fãs estão aí no Brasil esperando. Dana. Next. Yeah. Yep. Can you talk about how this fight really pushed the, uh, the barriers of the UFC's popularity? I mean, it, it was an all-time high for celebrities in attendance and just the, the buzz overall. It was. It was, it was, a, it was a killer weekend. Um, you know, p people were asking me, uh, do you think the fact that the fight was put off made it even, you know, more dramatic? I think that the, uh, like I said, I'm happy that everything came together. He made a big movie. It's a great movie. It's the summer hit. And we still got to do this fight. And, um... Yeah, th this this fight had a lot of buzz this weekend, and uh, I mean, people people who normally aren't, as far as I know, into MMA or into this one. If you could talk about uh, Michael Bisping's performance, and Michael, uh, if you could perhaps share where you feel you are now in the uh, middleweight division. Well, um, I wanted to finish my opponent tonight, but it was very tough. You know, obviously. Wanting to finish him is one thing, but actually doing it is, a diff is entirely different. As I said, he was very tough, very durable. I hit, I hit him with some big shots, but um, he was hungry. He wanted he wanted the win bad, and he hung in there. Um, in terms of where I am, you know, <clears throat> the only losses I've got on my on my record are to three former champions and all legends of the sport. You know, so um, I still hold my head I hold my head pretty high as to where I am in the middleweight division. But obviously, I've got to keep gaining on the momentum. Um, I feel now I'm starting to mature as a mixed martial artist and coming to my own um, skill-wise and, and, and confidence-wise. You know, I, I want to build, keep building on this win and hopefully, you know, towards the end of the year, early next year, get a title shot.
and I, I want to be the first Englishman to win a title. I was the first guy to win the Open Fighter, first English main eventer, and I will be the first English world champion. For Rampage. What? Yeah, no, I thought he looked great tonight. You know, I, I thought he looked I thought, you know, there were some standouts tonight. You know, obviously, um, you know, Bisbing looked great. Dan Miller was going after it, like you said. Dan Miller had the will to win tonight and didn't, uh, and, and didn't quit. He kept coming forward, kept, uh, you know, throwing and, and exchanged some big punches, took some big punches. Um, but I, I was really blown away tonight, too, by John Hathaway. Uh, that kid looked phenomenal, you know, and, and beating Diego Sanchez really means something. And that kid beat him. And one thing you got to understand, this kid's 22 years old. Uh, he's got a great future. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good night. For Rampage, please. Uh, obviously, you've been very respectful of Rashad and, and the win and congratulating him. The crowd was booing him a lot. They didn't really like the, the strategy at all. How did you feel as the fight was going on? Was it frustrating you at all? Were you surprised that you were you know, in the clinch as much and kind of stalled as much as it was? No, I kind of um, knew the fight was going to um, go that way. Um, it was no secret that Rashad was going to try to wrestle me a lot. You know, but I, I wrestled with a, with a um, Excuse me? I wrestled a lot. I trained a lot. But um, Rashad was um, faster than I anticipated. And, um, and he was um, more aggressive than I anticipated. He, he had a great uh, game plan, and it worked. It worked well for him. So I'm not a sore loser. That's why I commended him. You know what I'm saying? We, uh, you know what I'm saying? We all cut from the same cloth. We all, you know what I'm saying? Put our lives on the line and get in the octagon and, and and do battle. You know what I'm saying? We we the alpha men. I feel we the alpha men of the planet. And you know what I'm saying? If anybody beat me, no matter how they beat me or what day they beat me, they beat me, and I respect that. And if I could go to a shot, please. Obviously, congratulations on the win. Uh, in your mind, what was what was the key to your to your victory tonight? You said you kind of came in without a game plan, but what do you think was the key to the win? Um, one thing I wanted to do, I wanted to keep them guessing. You know, uh, you know, Rampage probably the best in the game when it comes to timing people pulling back and catching them with the uppercut. Uh, but um, I, I wanted to keep them guessing and not knowing what I was going to do. And, and I picked up picked up on a couple of things that he he was doing. You know, in anticipation for my shot. So I wanted to uh, try to exploit that. And was it difficult at all to maintain that discipline in that process? I mean, there were some boos coming in. The, the crowd didn't really necessarily – wasn't feeling the game plan so much. Uh, was it tough for you to, to keep that discipline? No, it wasn't. You know, one thing that uh, you understand really quickly as a fighter that the fans really don't understand is that you're not punching with with, uh, with, with eight or ten-ounce gloves on. you got four-ounce gloves on, and uh, underneath that's a cast. And it only takes one good shot for the fight to be over. So um, I wasn't trying to take no shots for no amount of boos. A question for Rashad. Rashad, congratulations. Um, it looked like you guys buried the hatchet afterwards. You spoke for a little bit in the middle of the octagon. Can you tell us what you said? You know, it, it, I was just giving him his respect. You know, uh, he, he came back from, from uh, um, you know, you know he, he was doing his movie and things like that, and he had a lot of things on his plate. And I know it had to be hard for him to come down and focus and, and to, you know, commit himself to the training camp with everything else he got going on. So, you know, he, he went in there and, and fought a lot better than I thought he was going to fight. And I was definitely impressed with that. Whenever you go in there and you fight somebody for 15 minutes and they give you everything they got, you know, there's, there's a bonding experience. There's an exchange in there, and I respected that. And for Rampage, uh, you talked about the ring rust. How soon would you like to get back in the octagon? Well, uh, I would like to get back in there as soon as possible. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't like the way I felt, how, how, how much I hesitated, stuff like that. This, this fight's going to hunt me for a long time as well. You know, I'm just one of those guys, you know. It's really, it's really going to hunt me. And last one for Michael. Michael, there was a lot of talk before the fight about him submitting you, being the first guy to do that. But he really didn't go for any serious takedowns until the third round about midway through. Were you surprised that he was so willing to stand with you for most of the fight? Yeah, I, I thought he was trying to lull me into a false sense of security. Um, at the end of the first round, I actually commented to my cornerman. I said, right, this time he's going to come out and he's going to shoot now in the second round. Um, I do think part of that was due to my footwork. I was, you know, I, I, I was staying out of range of the takedowns, constantly changing my angles. You know, so you've got to plant your feet and stand in front of your opponent if they're going to shoot on you. You know, and I wasn't giving him the opportunity to do that. Um, in terms of, in terms of jiu-jitsu, you know, everybody th seems to think they're going to submit me, but um, I've, I've done jiu-jitsu for years. I, I went to the, the World Championships in New Zealand when I was 16 years old. You know, people don't know these things, but um, I just, I just prefer to punch people. I did forget to say something before, though. Uh, Vanderlei Silva said he wants a rematch, and I would love a rematch. Just want to get that out.